Well, hello again, everybody, and continuing with my theme of Greek tragedies, great Greek tragedies. Today, I'm going to talk about the th what usually called the third of the uh, tragedians, Euripides, and in particular, the play Medea. Now, the character of Medea is one of the great roles for uh, a woman actor to play. Of course, when it was originally done in the fifth century uh, in Athens, it would have been played like a play by a man, uh, as indeed all roles were, uh, wearing a mask and, and suitable costume. Um, it was one of the parts which gave Euripides the reputation of being a woman hater. Uh, he wrote a number of parts where there are, uh, you might say that the characters of the women are just plain evil. Um, but from, a, from a, an actor's point of view, uh, they're great parts to play because there's really stuff that you can uh, really get stuck into. So Medea ultimately turns out to be a monster but she's a really persuasive character at first and I'm going to uh, share with you a couple of things about why that might be. First of all we need to know a little of the context. She had left her homeland uh, and followed Jason as in Jason and the Golden Fleece and gone back uh, to Greece with him which means that she's already in exile. So she's a non-Greek in a Greek world. Uh, she's a woman in a, a world very much controlled by men. Uh, she's already a killer. Um, she's killed one of her family and chopped him up and dropped the bits in the sea to delay pursuers uh, who were chasing after her and Jason. So she's already a somewhat fearsome character. So she's a killer. Uh, she's a potential poisoner. Uh, she's calculating. She's a fascinating character, and ultimately, uh, she's terrifying. Now, the play that Euripides has written is full of quotes. It's, it's one of the most quotable uh, plays. Uh, and I'm going to share uh, three highlights for you now. The first comes from fairly early on in the play, and it's uh, Medea talking uh, to her audience about why, uh, how and why many women suffer and I wonder every time I hear this or, or read this how many women over the centuries could uh, sympathize or empathize with these lines. So this is from uh, Euripides uh, Medea and this is what she says. She's talking to the women of Corinth who are uh, in some ways uh, uh, likely to sympathize with her but in other ways they're Greeks and she's not. And she says, Surely of all creatures that have life and will, we women are the most wretched. When for an extravagant sum we've bought a husband, we must then accept him as possessor of our body. This is to aggravate worse, uh, wrong with worse wrong. Then the great question, will the man we get be bad or good? For women, divorce is not possible. It's not respectable to repel the man not possible. Still more, a foreign woman coming among new laws, new customs, needs the spell of magic to find out what her home could not teach her, how to treat the man whose bed she shares. And if in this exacting toil we are successful and our husband does not struggle under the marriage yoke, our life is enviable, otherwise death is better. If a man grows tired of the company at home, he can go out and find a cure for tediousness. We wives are forced to look to one man only, and they tell us we at home are free from danger. They go out to battle. Fools! I'd rather stand three times in the front line than bear one child. I guess that's particularly persuasive uh, in the days before uh, perinatal uh, pain relief. She goes on to say a little later in the same scene and she's talking about uh, children and uh, she talks about how uh, her reputation has gone before her. Many times Creon my reputation has been my curse and ruin. A man of any shrewdness should never have his children taught to use their brains more than their fellows. What do you gain by being clever? You neglect your own affairs and all your fellow citizens hate you. 
Those who are fools will call you ignorant and useless when you offer them unfamiliar knowledge. And for those thought intelligent, if people rank you above them, that's a thing they will not stand. I know this from experience. Because I am clever, they're jealous, while the rest dislike me. After all, I'm not so clever as all that. Well, my dear, uh, clearly outlining uh, the pain and suffering she feels uh, of being a woman in a man's world and of being an intelligent woman at that, maybe amongst those uh, whom she regards as inferior to her in that. The play goes on and Medea gets more and more extreme uh, in deciding she's going to take vengeance on Jason, on his new wife. Uh, he's married into local royalty uh, to secure his position uh, and she decides she's going to kill his new wife uh, with a poisoned uh, poisoned dress, so it's like a napalm dress in effect, so Glauke uh, is killed by that. Creon, uh, her father, the Creon mentioned in that uh, speech just now, uh, tries to embrace her and he too dies. But then, towards the end of the play, she decides that she's going to get vengeance on Jason by killing the sons that they had together. So she's going to go from being a murderess and a poisoner uh, to being a killer of her own children. And when uh, Jason eventually finds out what, uh, uh, what she's done, he confronts her, uh, as he might. And this is what Medea says, and this is the calculating, terrifying part uh, that comes uh, in, in the very last scene of the play. And she says, Zeus, the father of all, knows well what service I once rendered you, and how you have repaid me. You were mistaken if you thought you could dishonour my bed and live a pleasant life and laugh at me. The princess Glauke was wrong too, and so was Creon when he took you for his son-in-law and thought he could exile me with impunity. So now am I a tiger, a Scylla? Hurl at me what names you please. I've reached your heart. That is right. And so Medea, at the end of the play, has got her vengeance on Jason by killing everybody that he cared about. His wife, his father-in-law, and the children that she and Jason had had together. Well, what can we take from all this? Modern scholar Philip Velicott says, uh, says this, Civilised men ignore at their peril the world of instinct, emotion and irrational experience. Carefully worked out notions of right and wrong are dangerous unless flexible and allowing for constant adjustment. So, uh, arguing, I suppose, for situationist ethics. Nietzsche, 19th century uh, philosopher and general misery, uh, in, uh, in his work uh, on tragedy, uh, notes that it's important to acknowledge both the Apollonian and the Dionysian, uh, both the rational side and the irrational side. For me, uh, I just think that you really need to be scared if you ever meet a problem like Medea.